Great. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, so thank you all for coming today. It's actually great to see so many faces here. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name's Ro, and I'm an online personal trainer, qualified nutrition coach, social influencer, and owner of my own website and business, Ramwa Fitness, in which I set up in September of 2016. And what I really wanted to talk about today was essentially how I started my business from something which was a really spontaneous idea to essentially the stage it's at now, uh, my journey, how I scaled it, how I built it, and hopefully some tips for you guys if you want to do something similar. So this is the front cover of my website. Um, I'm using Shopify, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. <clears throat> and so essentially, uh, what does my business do? So I'm an online personal trainer and nutrition coach. So um, like you'd have a personal trainer where you are back in your normal gym, I do exactly the same thing. I uh, train people online uh, via email, via Skype, um, and through WhatsApp and things like that. So I provide training and nutrition coaching uh, for people looking to essentially build muscle, um, lose fat, and essentially, you know, just improve their fitness and health. And luckily, I've been able to take clients on from all over the world. Uh, so a total of 15,000 people so far have had access to my training and nutrition plans, uh, which is great. Um, main market's the UK, uh, but I'm also quite big in the US, uh, which has grown well recently. Um, also parts of Europe and also in Asia too, um, which is really, really good. If I was to basically sum up Realm of Fitness in a sentence, it would definitely be you know, helping you achieve your fitness goals whilst fitting it around your lifestyle. And I think that's one of the hardest parts of sticking to a fitness routine is you know, fitting it to you. And I work with a diverse range of clients. So I have some young professionals, I have students, I have people that are tree surgeons, um, just completely you know, opposite ends of the spectrum. And you know, the key to what I do is helping you ingrain that into your lifestyle to ensure you get results. So the approach I like to take is a combination of evidence-based research uh, combined with practical application. So nothing I do is guesswork, it's all based on science, it's all based on literature, it's all based on studies that have been done and published. And then my expertise comes in by you know, practically applying that to your lifestyle and how best you work. So I thought I'd start with a little bit about me. So I'm from Bristol originally, um, if you guys know where that is, that's sort of the West Country. Um, sometimes I sound like a bit of a farmer. Um, so uh, I basically grew up really active and fit uh, when I was young. I had a massive passion for football and all I wanted to do was be a professional footballer. Unfortunately, I got to about 16, 17 and I realised I wasn't actually going to make it as a pro. So I started getting into the gym and into fitness and that really became a big passion of mine. Now, unfortunately, when I you know, first went into the gym, I made all the mistakes that you could you know, under the sun when it came to training and nutrition. I was following all these you know, guys that were you know, taking steroids that were massively enhanced. Um, and if you know anything about you know, health and fitness, you know, someone that trains naturally without you know, enhancements uh, is completely different to someone that trains you know, with steroids and things like that. So for me, I was making all these mistakes. I was about three years in, I got to 19, and you know, I just wasn't getting the results I wanted. And at this point for me, I really needed to start delving into evidence-based research and people that knew what they were talking about uh, because I knew that you know, these templates and sample diet plans that I was looking at online really weren't helping me. So in that year that I started you know, researching and listening to you know, the right people, I probably doubled the amount of progress in a year uh, with my physique and my body uh, than I did in those first three years. So it just goes to show you know, if you listen to the right stuff, it can really help. So basically after this point, I didn't really know what I wanted to do myself. I was one of those guys that was, you know, teetering on going to university, you know, teetering on going to a job. So I did what any young person would do, saved up some money and traveled around the world for 13 months. So I went to Southeast Asia, New Zealand and Australia, where I worked in Australia for a bit. And this was, you know, a big stepping point to me setting up my business because I really loved the outdoor lifestyle of Australia. I loved, you know, Bondi Beach. I loved eating healthy, being active. Uh, and for me, this really, really sparked, you know, what I wanted to do. Um, and, you know, in my mind, I think it was fitness. So I then got back to the UK and I sort of realized that I wanted to go to university. And I ended up studying at Pearson College here in London, where I study business management and global industries. And that basically spurred me on to uh, do more traveling and things like that. Um, really, from my travels, I wanted to do, you know, work, you know, at that point, I wanted to work all around the world and you know, visit new people and things like that. And that's where we are at now. So that brings us on nicely to essentially how I set up my business. 
So it's actually quite a funny story. Um, I just finished my first year at university and I was at my mate's house and we were sat on the sofa and he basically runs his own company. And he basically said that, you know, you can buy your domain on GoDaddy for a penny, right? So you can buy realmwellfitness.com for one penny. And at this point, I had no preconceived idea I wanted to be an online coach to set up a business and, you know, give my training programs to, you know, thousands of people. I just thought it'd be a great project over summer. So this is essentially what I did. I got um, a little bit of help from him, but I set up a Word WordPress website from scratch, um, from essentially the domain to something that was fully operational, that could take payments and you know, could do all the things that it needed uh, in the space of about four to five months. And I didn't actually have any investment to do that. I think I paid 50 to 100 pounds to basically get like the theme and pay for you know, the resourcing and the domain itself. But the rest I did my, on my own, and it just goes to show, you know, you can set up a business with absolutely nothing. Um, as long as you put the time in and things like that, and you get help from other people, it's definitely possible. So when the website was sort of in progress, I realized that I needed a way and a system to, you know, train clients and to provide meal plans, training programs, and things like that. And I needed a process of doing that. So I started building up templates. And this was templates of you know, guides that I was gonna to send to people and then that I was gonna adjust for others. So I basically had a method to you know, what I was gonna do. And again, none of this was fancy, none of this was you know, expensive. I used Microsoft PowerPoint, I used uh, Word and Excel to make all this. And it was really effective because if you know what you're doing and you know what you're gonna put into the plans, as long as you've got a clean minimalistic design, um, it's gonna work and that's the way I look to approach it. And so, yeah, the first stage is really utilizing my, you know, contacts really helped. So helping build the website, helping even get the templates. I had friends that were strength and conditioning coaches, personal trainers that helped me do that. Um, and also one that I had a friend at the time, she was a model and she basically had access to a photographer. And I thought it'd be great to get some professional photos done for my website and for my training programs and things like that. So that's what I did. I got in front of a camera, uh, a photographer, and yeah, I, half an hour for free, which was great. Um, and again, I didn't pay for that. There was no cost to that. It was just, you know, luckily having a friend that could do that for me. So it was great. So at this point, we're all basically set up to go. I had the website, I had some photos, I had templates, I had an idea of how I was gonna run this. But then I realized I needed to really build some credibility. I needed to gain more knowledge of, you know, training and nutrition. So I decided to do a nutrition course with um, LDNM Muscle. Has anybody heard of them before at all? Nope, but they're quite, they're quite big in London and also in the UK. They provide like bikini guides and like other guides to go on holiday um, to get you in shape and things like that. And they also have an academy where they train people to become coaches. And that's what I did. So I became a coach uh, over the course of a weekend and the access to you know, information that I've had through that and support through you know, the heads who I'm friendly with has been really useful. And yeah, that was basically essentially how I just started up. So yeah, this was basically my WordPress website that I made myself. Um, so not too bad, to be honest. I mean, it's nothing fancy, but you can see there you've got the tab at the top, uh, some nice icons, just really clean and minimalistic, um, which I was pretty happy with. Definitely not a super savvy web designer, but it definitely works, and that's what I needed. So the next point for me was to really look at scaling my website. I um, needed people to know about me. And the first way I did that was through Facebook. So the day that I launched, um, luckily, all of my friends back in Bristol, uh, friends and family like, shared my post that I you know, set up this website. And I got something crazy like nearly like 100 shares in the evening um, and loads of people liking my you know, page and my posts. Uh, and even on the first like, evening, like two hours in, I had a client. So I checked my PayPal account and I had someone actually buying something on that night. Um, so I was sort of like, right, I need to learn how to coach people now because I literally didn't have a clue um, what, how I was really gonna approach it. It just took, so, it took me so quickly. Um, and for the first year, that's really how I built my business. I trained a lot of the people I knew, a lot of people from around Bristol, uh, people that I was working with, and that worked really, really well. Unfortunately, you can't do that forever, and I realized I needed to start scaling even more. I needed, like, more, um, I needed more people to know who I was, what my brand was, and what my business was about. So I started growing my Instagram page, and I remember I started, I think, at around 1,000 followers or something, and I'm now at 22,000, um, which is a good amount of growth in a year and a half. Um, and that's been a really good way for me to obviously gain clients. And again, with little to no investment, it's a good way to grow, right? I didn't throw any money at it, uh, really. It was all just me putting out content, being consistent, um, and trying to provide value. 
Another great way in which I've scaled is through the app called Sweatcoin. Now, has anyone here got the app at all? No? Nope. Yeah, at the back? So essentially what uh, Sweatcoin is, is an app that pays you to walk. So you do outdoor steps and you get sweat coins. And basically you get these sweat coins and you can use them on the app to purchase you know, things on the app. So um, at the time, one of my friends was actually interning at the place um, back in June. And this was when they had about 600,000 or half a million downloads. And now it's 6 million. So they've grown rapidly in the space of just under a year. And I went on there and provided a free program for people to essentially, you know, get an idea of how to train uh, for four weeks. So I do a men's uh, muscle building guide and a women's get tone program as well. And this has been a huge way for me to scale. I mean, for instance, last month I got something like 250,000 targeted users to my website, um, which was crazy. Um, and yeah, so many people were, were sort of on there and you know, up, upselling on there was, was crazy as well. So it's been a great way for me to grow. And I found that basically providing something for free is always a good way to you know, scale when you're starting out, especially when people don't know who you are. It's that trust element, right? People don't want to give their money to you if they don't know you, which is fair enough. So giving someone a slice of basically what you have to offer um, and then letting them do that um, and upselling from there is a really great way to you know, scale and build your business. Um, and that's what I found to be very successful. So next, I realized that I, as Sweatcoin was growing, I needed basically more, um, a more up-to-date system to basically operate on. I needed to basically future-proof my website. So I actually uh, met Chris and he's a Shopify expert, as I'm sure he'll tell you later. But he basically said that I should migrate to Shopify from WordPress uh, to basically help with analytics, you know, getting better data, putting more products on and managing it, you know, in a more efficient way. So that's what I did. And again, I actually did that predominantly myself. I didn't pay anybody to do it. I learned how to basically migrate my stuff from WordPress to Shopify with help from obviously Chris and a few others that knew how to do plugins and, you know, work the system. Um, but again, you know, if you just use, you know, time that you have and you put your mind to it, uh, you don't have to pay for it, right? It's, it's, it can be very simple to do. So another way that I uh, try to scale my business is through public speaking. So um, obviously I'm speaking here now, and I also do some public speaking at universities, and I'm going to be doing some uh, a range of schools in Bristol, as well as some old colleges. And although I know this is a digital you know, marketing talk, I think it's so important to you know, meet people face to face and you know, see them in real life. I, I always find when I meet people in real life um, and then I see what they do online, it sort of like double validates what they're about. So if you meet someone in real life, you're like, I really like them and you go online and you see what they're doing on social media, their website and all that, it's, again, it's that double validation that brings that trust. So probably speaking is something I love doing and something that I you know, really want to do in the future as well. So here's a snapshot of my Instagram page. Yes, it's a lot of photos with me and my top off, I will admit. Um, so I try and go for a lifestyle sort of look. Uh, you know, photos of me on a holiday, in the gym, um, out and about, and things like that. So yeah, I find that you know, the fitness content's usually more engaging, but I really like you know, trying to mix it up and things like that and try things with social media uh, and see how it responds. So yeah, that's that. And here's some basically statistics from uh, basically the first quarter of this year for my website. So you can look at total online store visits, uh, 320,000, uh, which is up a ridiculous percent on the quarter before. And then total orders, uh, 13,207. Again, just crazy, crazy growth. Um, and online store visits, uh, so mainly most of the traffic's being driven from the U United States, uh, which is a big market. Uh, UK, Canada, Ireland, and also Spain. So now that's basically enough about me. What I really want to talk about is tips on how to progress in the industry and essentially, you know, with your business and what, and what you want to do. So definitely, you've got to be good at what you do. Um, in the fitness industry, I split that up into three parts. Appearance, knowledge, and people skills. So appearance, uh, unfortunately, it goes without saying. It is, you know, very image-based. I always say you wouldn't hire an accountant if they're broke. So why would you hire a personal trainer if they're not in shape? I think you should be able to walk the walk when it comes to uh, being a personal trainer. But more importantly than that, you've got to know what you're doing. Uh, you've got to have, have an understanding of knowledge and how to essentially train people, how to coach people and what motivates them. Uh, that definitely links with people skills. You've got to have those people skills, um, not just in fitness, but in life. Um, so that's really, really important. 
Another really important one is to network and collaborate. So I don't think I would have set up my business if it wasn't from the help of other people, um, for people like my mate who set my website up, people that you know, did favors for me and things like that. Um, and you know, it's not just about you getting stuff off people, really it's about you giving as well. So there's a lot of people you know, that are starting out that need help, whether that's clothing companies, whether that's other brands and other young people. So working with them is a great way to use your platform to help them uh, and to also help yourself. Um, I don't think anyone gets to the top of what they want to do uh, without networking and collaborating with others. So uh, a really important one as well is to act with integrity. So um, basically a few months ago, I got offered quite a large sum of money to promote a product I didn't really believe in. And it looked really nice as well, um, especially as a student in London. Uh, you can probably imagine how tempting it was for me to say yes. Um, but straight away, I said no. It wasn't even a second thought. Um, you know, the short term uh, of me getting the money was never going to, you know, overcome the long term impact on my reputation that would have happened if I did promote this product um, as well. And it's, it's not just about products, it's about integrity and what you believe in and what your brand's about um, and sticking to that, you know, as much as you can because that's what's going to take you far. So another really important one is to build a strong following that you engage with. And you see that I put that you engage with. Because um, I couldn't care how many followers I had on Instagram, um, really, I couldn't really care. What I care about is engagement, the amount of people that are you know, liking my stuff, commenting, you know, actually DMing me, um, you know, voting on my polls on my Instagram story. This is what really, what's really important, right? You want people to buy into you and what you're doing. Um, so I can care if I had 2,000 followers or 22,000, 200,000. Of course, it's great to have more, but it's all about that engagement and actually having some sort of effect. And that's not just a following on social media. I think it's really important to build a mailing list. So my mailing list is nearly at 10,000 people now, uh, which is great. And this is a key funnel to basically contact people from your business, right? So if you're promoting a sale, if you're sharing a blog post, getting that out to people is so, so important. So um, yeah, don't underestimate that. Another really important one is to try and find a niche. So I don't really think I've got a niche at the moment. Um, I'm quite a bit of an all-rounder, to be honest, but you know, the name of my brand is Realm of Fitness and that's what I want it to be. It's, it's me, right? So however I transition through life and what I do, I want you know, that company to come with me. And I, when I go on that journey, I want other people to you know, be on that journey too. So again, at the moment, it's a lot of people lifestyle based and things like that. But if I decided I wanted to go into more of a bodybuilding scene or women's fitness or something like that, then that's the way it would work, right? It will transition with me. Um, but if you can find a niche early on and you're really successful, then I think that can be really good for you in the industry. So another big one is to look for the latest trends. So um, like with me, I was able to jump on Sweatcoin when I had half a million users, they're now nearly at six million, growing rapidly. So if you can try and get on something like that, you know, when you're starting out, it's a great way to gain exposure. It's a great way to get your you know, programs or whatever you're selling out to people to see. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a really important one. So another really important one is to uh, not take yourself too seriously. So uh, I think it was last week, I posted like a Transformation Tuesday on, um, <laughs> on Instagram. And uh, basically the first photo was a photo of Kim Jong-un with a cigarette. And the second one was me with my top off. And I put like Transformation Tuesday, bulk versus cut, right? Just so completely, you know, ripping the piss out of myself. A um, little bit racist towards myself as well. Um, <laughs> but at the end of the day, highlights to people, you don't take yourself too seriously, um, especially in like fitness. Like everybody's got this like go hard, go home mentality. Um, and I really try and veer away from that. I try and you know, be relatable, I try and be you know, as human as possible with people, uh, while still obviously still having that drive and you know, trying to achieve the goals that we want, because that's just as important. Um, but not taking yourself too seriously is really funny. I still have people screenshotting me, you know, the photo now uh, in my DMs like cracking up. So um, yeah, they can always go viral as well. So uh, things like that are always um, pretty good to do. The most important one, if you're gonna take anything away from this talk today, is to provide value. So it's really easy to open up your shop for business and say to people, buy my stuff. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Um, I've found, you know, for the year and a half that I've been doing stuff, I've just started to get the returns now of the work that I've been putting in. So that's a year and a half of putting out content, putting out YouTube videos where you only get 100 views. Um, you know, lots, maybe not people taking, you know, you seriously to begin with, right? Um, 
But if you do that more and you provide more value, you give, you'll you know, receive back in tenfold what you give, right? Um, and I'm starting to reap that now. And I'll never stop trying to you know, provide value. And there's lots of ways of doing it, right? Um, you don't have to be informative all the time. You know, there's lots of people that are really funny, that that works for them. Some people are just dead nice and like really happy. So that works for them. So trying to find what works for you and providing value that way is a really, really good way to you know, build that you know, business and you know, progress in the industry. So what do I do outside of my business? So outside of my business, I'm a student. Um, so I'm at Pearson College studying business management with global industries. Uh, I'm lucky enough to actually have a mentor there as well. So a guy actually runs his own business and he mentors me um, for my business and gives me support, which is really good. I also work part-time as well. So I'm working for a startup at the moment in London, basically trying to get that off the ground, uh, working for running their social media. So I'm basically using my skills to help them. Uh, but it's also a great opportunity for me to learn from people too. So um, one of the heads of marketing there, she's helping me you know, in increase my open rates on MailChimp and my mailing list. So never like sort of take your, uh, work, your part-time work for granted. Um, there's always things that you can learn and you know, develop in that. So, if you can get a job that you know, links to what you want to do, uh, then that's always great. But you can always make the best of a you know, bad situation. You know, some retail jobs I've absolutely hated. I've ended up picking up clients from doing it, right? Because you, know, you just end up chatting to them on a shift and they buy some of your stuff. So don't underestimate that. So I'm also a, a social influencer. Uh, my friends would probably say more of a bad influencer. But um, <laughs> I do do a few paid ads on Instagram. I work with like Tortilla, uh, My Protein, Sport Direct, um, Cognac. So yeah, I just started doing that. And again, for me, I'm not really hugely on the social influencing for ads all the time. I'd rather influence through my own brand and what I do. But you know, if someone's going to offer me money to do an ad and it aligns with what I want and my business, then I'm not going to say no. Um, especially if I do believe in it too. As well, um, I do public speaking, as I've mentioned. So unfortunately, I'm not Anthony Robbins quite yet, um, but I am gonna try my best to uh, get better at it, and it's something that I really, really wanna keep doing. So uh, as well, what else am I sort of passionate about? Jen, my other passions apart from fitness are travel and fashion. So definitely from traveling around the world, that really sparks me to wanna to do more traveling. And this is why I set up an online business was because I wanna be able to you know, work from anywhere in the world one day and hopefully still be making money, meeting new people, having new experiences and doing all that sort of stuff. Fashion is also a big one for me. Um, so I'm not as fashionable as Chris or Barbie, unfortunately, um, but I am trying to get tips off them. And maybe one day, you know, Rama Fitness will release a apparel line, a gym line or something like that. So yeah, there's lots in the works and things like that. And lastly, basically my biggest passion just comes from life. Um, I'm just one of these people I feel that, you know, we're all here and we're all lucky to be in this position that we are. And you know, there's only really one way that we live life and that's you know, chasing all our dreams, you know, pursuing what we love. Um, gratitude's always a big one as well. So people say, you know, how do you balance running a business? How do you essentially you know, work part-time and then do a full-time degree? Well, it all just comes down to gratitude for me. Like we're part of the top 2% of the population in the world. Like when you think about it, it's actually crazy. Like we're all in good health, most of us. We don't have you know, that much wrong with us. We've got a you know, roof over our heads. Most of us have got like, enough money. Right, so that should be enough to go out and do what you want and pursue your passion, right? Um, and I, sometimes I think we forget that. I think when we complain about our first world problems, if we could just say to ourselves gratitude every time, then you know it'd make life so much easier, and we'd be driven from that point. And lastly, that just like links really well with urgency. So we're all going to be dead in like I don't know how long, 80, 90 years. And it, it sounds real, it sounds super pessimistic, right? It sounds so pessimistic when you put it like that. Um, but when you look at it, right, that, that's just, that's great because, you know, that gives us time to like live the way we want to live. And although the clock's ticking, you've got time to do something that you love and that you're passionate about. Um, and that for me is a big driver. So, um, yeah, I think that's a really good one to end on. And what I want, <laughs> not dying, but optimism. Um, <laughs> Um, so basically what I want to do as well, for all of you coming today, I want to offer you a free program from my website. So guys, you'll be able to get the men's full week muscle building program, and girls, you'll be able to get the full week get tone program at 100% off. So all you need to do is put this discount code in on my website, so note it down if you want it. It's Buttertalk, and this will give you discount at checkout uh, for 100% off the men's and women's full week program. 
So before I go into a short Q&A, uh, I do want to say a massive thank you to you all for coming. I hope this was useful, insightful, and I'll be around at the end if any of you have any questions and want to chat. Cool. Cool. Oh yeah, questions? Has anyone got any questions? Hi, at the back. Um, I think it's like probably vital uh, is networking. Um, a lot of the opportunities that I've got, I would never have got through not networking and chatting to people. So again, being really sociable and really open with people is so important. Going to like free events, things like this are great. Um, also networking online too, trying to you know, align yourself with other people that are you know, thinking the same way as you or going in that direction is always great. And even at like work and things like that, um, there's so many opportunities right, to do it like, when you're like, meeting people. So yeah, I think it's vital to do it. Any more? Do you have like a team behind you or do you? No, no. So everything I do is my, myself. I run everything myself and that's the way I want to keep it. So, um, well, obviously, hopefully until it grows and then I'll look to employ people. But um, at the moment I do everything myself, I feel that I can do it and I can just about manage it all. Uh, but as things scale and get bigger, then I'm going to look to outsource certain pieces of work, especially specific bits of work, things like, you know, if I need videos doing and things like that, I'll be happy to reinvest that into outsourcing to other people, um, especially if they can do a better job as well. Cool. Anybody else? Yeah, definitely. So I started YouTube a little bit, um, but it wasn't really the right time. As you know, YouTube's really you know, time consuming, editing and, and vlogging all the time. But that's something I'm going to start doing after I finish my university in May. Um, and I'm really going to smash the content for that, try and you know, bring something different for everybody. So that's a nice project that I'm going to be working on too. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Are you sure? Go once, go twice. Yep. Did you buy your wallet? Did I buy my bottles? <laughs> well, we're going to end it. Like, um, <laughs> no, I didn't actually. Um, I built it all up myself. Um, yeah, like buy and followers don't really work. It looks good, but then like you realise they're all bots and stuff like that. So you don't actually get any return. It's all for show. So yeah, cool. Uh, anybody else got anything for me? The product. So yeah, it was a it was a weight loss product that basically said that, like. You could like block carbs. You could like block carbs, and they want basically they wanted me to like get a photo like in front of a massive pizza and like all my like cheap food, and then put their product in front and put like carb blocker. I <laughs> just said what 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 is this? You know what I mean? So um, straight away I had to say no to that. Um, I couldn't sell my soul for for that. So yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh yeah, so Instagram algorithm is changing. I did watch a video on that. Um, I think that's important to understand what's going on, but don't read too much into algorithms and the way things are done, because if your content's good and people buy into you and they like you, algorithms don't matter because they're liking your stuff anyway, right? They're engaging with your polls anyway and things like that. They're, you know, it can maybe learn in a few things about hashtags and putting that in there, but that shouldn't be at the forefront of your mind. That should be like the 10%, the 90% you should be looking at your content, how you're putting yourself across uh, and the value you're giving. So yeah, it's important, but not really, in my opinion. Cool. Anybody else? No? Great. Well, thank you very much again, guys, and have a great evening. What's up? Um, so it's, uh, it's just because it's kind of like an intimate situation. We can keep it kind of chill. It's more so a conversation. Don't even take things too seriously. Um, so my name is Chris. Um, I do a lot of branding and digital content media marketing. And so just a little bit about me. Um, I'm a digital content creator, and then I mainly focus on uh, fashion and lifestyle content. Uh, my handle is Chris I Chung, so if you guys want to bust your headphones out and just give me a follow, that's, that's, you know, I appreciate it. Um, I also run a digital marketing agency back in Asia and Hong Kong that does a lot of work for uh, brands, celebrities um, in Asia and also the States. And so we do everything um, from social media marketing to um, uh, email marketing to UX UI design and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anything that's digital. Um, 
And I also run an e-commerce group that's in London, and then we do mainly um, a lot of like different uh, dropshipping stuff. So can I just get a show of hands if people know what dropshipping is? Okay, so yeah. So for the people that don't know what dropshipping is, um, it's basically um, selling, having a store online and selling products, but I don't actually have to hold stock on physical products. Uh, so when people order from me, I technically order from someone else and then they ship it to their address. And so I am in charge of all the marketing stuff. So everything online from basically getting the traffic and getting people to convert on specific products. And so where I mainly work is uh, my company. Chris, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Just switch the mic off. Is it like, up. it is up. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so where I mainly work is um, I was born in Los Angeles, but I was raised in Hong Kong. And I'm currently just finishing up uh, my studies here in the University of London. And so uh, my agency is back in Hong Kong. And Brandon, he's one of my partners. Um, and <laughs> it's fine. Uh, and I do um, quite a bit of work in LA as well with different bloggers and brands and stuff like that. And also um, in London now. So like I said, um, most of my content is like fashion lifestyle based. And so a lot of food, food, fashion, lifestyle. And just because that's how um, I started my Instagram maybe like two, three years ago. And um, what I wanted to do was really like monetize my Instagram. I want to get paid to do, paid to be a, an Instagrammer. It's like, that's like just the sickest job. Like you wake up, you take pictures, you get paid. Like that's like so sick. And so, so I kind of put in the work and then I study a little bit on how like to grow an Instagram, grow a following and stuff like that. You know, I, I, I definitely looked into like if I wanted to buy followers or if I don't want to buy followers or how, how do people actually go by doing this kind of stuff. And so, um, I didn't buy followers, just to, you know. Uh, so over like two, three years time, I was able to build a following of like 45K. It's nothing compared to a lot of my friends, but then it's, it's enough to do um, branding work and also work as an influencer and to get into, you know, you get, you get a little bit of perks here and there, getting invited to events that people don't typically get invited to or like to get paid to post basically. Um, and so like, um, I, I, didn't go, I didn't go into it saying like, oh dude, let me just do fashion and lifestyle because it makes money. Like I actually genuinely like fashion and lifestyle and that's kind of how I, that was like my mindset and because I knew that I could monetize that then and that's how I kind of put in the work and made my content um, kind of surround it. Yeah. And so my agency is called Locate 852. Um, 852 is the zip code for Hong Kong. So. That's the reason behind that. Um, so like I was saying, we do social media marketing mainly for um, fashion lifestyle brands in Asia um, and also celebrities. Uh, we focus on a lot of email marketing as well for different kinds of companies. Um, we do UX UI design, so like um, different kinds of apps or like backend stuff. And then we also do marketing in China. And so because China is such a big market with uh, where Facebook and Instagram, that kind of stuff is all banned, um, they don't actually use these kind of platforms in there, and then they use uh, WeChat and other social media platforms. So then we kind of figured out um, how to do that for China. And so we can connect brands from the UK or the US and stuff like that, that people want to go into China. We can, we basically are a bridge for them to do so. And so um, we would do, we would take all their content from like Instagram, and Facebook and stuff like that, and then we can transform it into like a, a suitable format for the Chinese people, basically. Um, oh, the font's kind of small. So this is kind of example of our clients. Um, Ferrari Collector, um, he, we, we kind of started, his account started with like around 200K following, and then we helped him grow to, this is from today, he's at 723K, and then it's just mainly his, um, his, kind of, his kind of profile is like all the high-end stuff, so he owns over 50 supercars, and so it's almost, um, it's all about like high-end lifestyle and stuff like that. So we help them with like branding towards um, packaging the whole thing, how we can solidify that even further. Um, and it really helped when he also got verified on um, Instagram. And then Grace Wong is, uh, this is like another example of our client. Um, she is a Hong Kong, she's, a, she's, a, she's an actress and singer in Hong Kong. 
And so um, this year, it was our first year that um, we, we were able to link up and then do work for, for branding for companies and stuff like that, and then bring her into Fashion Week in Milan, London, and stuff like that. Um, so I just kind of wanted to make this talk more like a little bit more intimate, not so much as me just shoving info down your throat. So then, um, so you guys, like, I'm, I'm pretty chill with talking about like Instagram, you know, more so about content creation or like um, how I monetize. I went by monetizing my Instagram or um, like getting jobs and stuff like that or Facebook um, and then, or Facebook, like e-commerce, e like how I, I started my own store and then we, we took it to a very profitable store in a very short amount of time, or even just like my story, like my story. So can I get a show of hands if you guys want to talk about, like hear me talk about Instagram or Facebook? Instagram, let me get Facebook, okay, or e-commerce or my story. Okay, you guys just care about the followers. Okay, no one cares about me, that's fine too. Um, so if you guys want to hear about Instagram, um, Instagram has been big for the past, I'd say, four years. Um, I think four years ago is when people really started to, um, bloggers kind of started, and then people started noticing what even the word influencer was. Um, in Asia, they call them KOLs, and that's like key opinion leaders. Um, and so around like three years ago is kind of how like I picked up on like bits and pieces. So you see articles or like videos of like these people that are like getting paid to do this kind of stuff. And I was like, Ooh, it was very interesting. No one really used Instagram for like a business sense back then. It was more so of like a personal page. It was just to share your, um, kind of your content with friends and family. And so I was like, if I wanted to get to where they were at, um, I kind of figured out like the steps I needed to do in order to get there. And the first bit was always content curation. So I had to figure out what kind of content I wanted to produce and how I can go by um, getting paid to do so. Um, and so the thing that I gravitated, the content that I gravitated towards was, like I said, was like fashion lifestyle based. And I understood and I, and I kind of liked that just because I knew with fashion and lifestyle is where, and, and also food, and as where like you get paid the most to do so. Um, food is typically more so of uh, free food. Who doesn't like free food? Um, you get invited to nice restaurants to, to just to eat for free, and you just take a picture. Obviously, it has to be a nice picture, but then um, depending on how, um, how, how I, I just kind of analyzed like which past there were and then fashion and lifestyle was where I, be, I chose to begin. And so with, oh, font's messed up, that's fine. Um, with like any type of uh, digital content growth, I think like every single, even with every single platform is all about good content, consistency, and then the numbers would come. So people were like, dude, you just take pictures and then you get paid, like that's like, it's, it's kind of weird, like people don't really get that, like how it's like easy, so it's not a business. So, but what they don't get is like, um, you gotta have good content daily. Like if you can do two posts a day, then do two, but I, I say like the minimum is one, you have to do posts once a day. And I'm not talking about just like a, like a mirror selfie, unless you're like Kendall Jenner, but, um, uh, like good content consistency. So you have to do daily. So if you, if you, if you want to commit to this kind of stuff, then even with anything, you got to do it like with very good consistency and then the growth would come. Um, so with Instagram being such a visual platform, um, I'm not supposed to move. Okay. With Instagram being such a, like a visual platform, um, everything needs to be curated down to like little, very small things that people think are like super extra, but it's like what makes the differences because there's only like five buttons on Instagram. So like you better make the most out of every little bit. Um, so the first bit is like, like the, it's almost like a funnel. So I call it like a, like a content funnel. So then um, the first bit would be about pictures. So like what kind of content do you, are you actually producing? 
are you doing all food? Are you doing all lifestyle stuff? Or are you doing um, only fashion stuff? So I think picking like the right balance is what you need depending on the goal that you want to go for. Um, and so once uh, you get the pictures out of the way, then it's also almost um, the second bit would be the, the colors. So you need, in order to have a nice feed, you need a very cohesive tone um, alongside with everything that you produce. So everything looks nice together because just, so yeah, everything looks nice together. So if you choose to do like more than one type of content, then obviously you would need to space them out. So spacing is another thing. If um, you're doing like different types of genre, and unless you're doing like all food, then you would just stick to food and spacing wouldn't be too much of a thing. So this, that goes insane. So, uh, try and um, lift the mic like, a little bit closer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just, just speak like that. Like, okay. Cool. Um, so, on the right is my current feed. And so, just to like break it down a little bit, um, because of like, uh, so I always space things out with a photo that doesn't have me in it and then a photo that has me in it. Um, just because it, it just makes things work better. Uh, so it, because this way, when people, when brands and stuff like that look at my feed, they would know what kind of content I typically curate. And if I have a style that I follow, then it would make, uh, it, it basically opens my doors up to like different brands that I, want to, I can work with. So because of like food and lifestyle stuff, I'm able to work with like very big hotels over the world and you get to stay for free. Or if you work with like, uh, because of the, the fashion stuff, then I would get to work with like, uh, like, uh, like Dior, for example, for like clothing and stuff like that. Um, so I would do either like a food pick or like, a, like, like this one's like, uh, like a cafe pick um, or a lifestyle shot and I'll space it out. And I also edit all my pictures in a very similar way. And I try to take all my pictures in a similar way. Um, because it, otherwise it wouldn't look cohesive. So um, with the editing, the editing obviously comes after you take the picture, but then even with take, choosing where to take the pictures itself is a big part of it, just because if I take a very dark picture, it just wouldn't look, it would just, if I just stuck a very dark picture right here, it would just look off in comparison to everything else. Um, so it's like, and then I would use uh, different apps to kind of pre-plan each post. So I'm around like nine posts ahead. So when people think that I'm still at Fashion Week, it's like two months ago. Um, yeah, uh, so I would have all my pictures lined up and then I would reschedule and then plan out every, move things around. I like stare at my feed a little bit too much uh, to move things around to see what works best. And then that's how I plan out my feed. Um, so I actually have a gift for all of you guys. Um, because I get a question, I get asked a lot by different people saying like, yo, um, how do I go by growing my actual Instagram? How do I do branding and stuff like that? So with, if you guys go to this link, um, you get a free uh, PDF guide, a complete one that uh, my team and I wrote, which is I think over 10 to 15 pages long of in-depth, step-by-step -step guide of how to do branding on Instagram, curating your own stuff. Um, basically, even like, even like the underground tricks are on there, like stuff like that where you're not typically supposed to use, but I didn't say that. Uh, you also get opted into a exclusive, um, like a Facebook coaching group that uh, my company and I run. Um, with that group, you guys will get weekly free content um, on like different types of uh, stuff that we kind of are doing currently with Instagram, how like um, the algorithm changes would affect it, um, that type of stuff. And then we also answer a lot of the questions on there with uh, regardings to like, if you guys have like, oh, how do I, how do I edit certain stuff? Or like, where do you edit your stuff? Or like, um, what's the best time to post and all that kind of stuff. Whatever that's not, is not on the guide. Um, I'll also have, we'll, we'll definitely answer within the group. So if you guys just go on there and then 
just type in your name and email, and then you can either get it right away or like we'll, we'll get email to you anyway, um, the PDF and also um, the the guide. I mean, I mean the group. So yeah, uh, the page looks like this. So it's a complete. It's like we just we just finished this guide. We finished it last week, and so we've just. Um, put this up on the new link and stuff like that. So you guys are getting like very up-to-date stuff. And yeah, we do like different types of private coaching on there. It's all for free, it's all for free. So yeah, do you guys have questions? Question? So for example, Instagram is a platform. Yeah. Um, do you feel as though it might be a bit oversaturated? Yes, and that's where like content, like creating content comes into play because uh, like vlogging on YouTube is saturated until Casey Neistat came out with his own way of vlogging and then it made it interesting. So it's just like there's a very set formula of how you can go by doing this plat using this platform and then you just have to be creative with like playing around with different things. Oh, is that it? Yeah, Chris, can you tell us about your drop shipping? How does that uh, incorporate into your branding? Um, so my dropshipping company is a different company to my, uh, my agency. And so with dropshipping, we basically run a uh, group of like different accounts. And then we run, the way we do it is we pick and we build up a brand new site and we choose our own niche and product. And then we basically use uh, different types of advertisements and to drive traffic in there and to make them convert and buy our stuff. Yes. Yeah, I was interested if you had much bad experience with job shipping and how have you, how have you overcome that? Um, you yes, I've had quite a bit of bad experience. Oh, I, I started maybe like a year and a half, two years ago. Um, and it was a lot of trial and error. Uh, with it, Drop shipping is like a very easy concept. So you can just make a site, import stuff with like two buttons. And then you can, you're supposed to be able to like, anyone that goes onto your site can buy instantly. So the setup takes you a day, but to get the amount of people, the right people to come into your store to buy is the hard bit. And that's where a lot of like studying and like working with people that really know what they're doing, um, speaking with different like, people that are like already very successful or like reading up a lot. And then it's, it's so much with like trial and error so um, it's, you definitely, I feel like everyone should have, like if they're about to do drop shipping, you must have um, at least an allocated budget to kind of play around with it. Um, have you any tips on finding uh, reliable suppliers? Yeah, I think um, with reliable suppliers, depending on what sites you guys are, uh, what you, you would use, um, I think everything is down to, it's basically like Amazon. You gotta look at the reviews, how many people have bought it, uh, what people say about the product itself. Um, is it a good make? Is it not good make? Or is shipping too long? Or is it too, like, it's, it's, it's all about playing, uh, finding like kind of a middle ground of like, it, it's hard to like sell um, like an iPhone case where it's so accessible, but it's super reliable because they've sold 200,000 iPhone cases, um, but it's so saturated. So how do you compete with that? So it's like about finding a right balance of like a good quality make product but not, um, it's not too oversaturated. Uh, how do yeah. you discover your tone of voice on Instagram? Sorry, say that again? How do you discover your tone of voice? Like, uh, do you keep it consistent? Like, how do you, is it like humorous or? Um, I keep it pretty chill, but that's like, it's funny, like it, when you read my Instagram, it seems like it's just very casual and chill, but it's actually, not because it's, it's a, I just treat it as a full on business. So I, I take it a lot, a lot more serious than like the average person would take their own Instagram, even though the perceived, to, it's to make the audience think that it's very candid and very chill when it's the absolute opposite. Yeah. And what do you schedule your, your content on? What do you mean? What tools and things? Uh, I use this app called UNUM. U N U M. Um, that just basically allows you to to schedule things on there and then drag around and then to play around what 
um, how each photo works with the other photos. Right. Yeah. Uh, what's the best event you've been invited to to start your Instagram? Um, it was great to be invited to a lot of the high-end shows in Milan Fashion Week and also London Fashion Week, and um, more so of like the brands that I was able to rework with was. Um, like Shangri-La Hotel to stay for free or to eat for free or um, get to work with like Ralph Lauren or Dior where you get free clothes or you get to go to like exclusive parties with celebrities, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What would you say about hashtags? Like using the right hashtags or too many, too little? Um, so, so it used to be unlimited like five years ago. And then they made it so it was only 30. And so right now, I would, and then I went to using the 30. So like I would say, if I'm posting a fashion, fashion, uh, fashion type of content, I'd have a set 30 hashtags that would stick in there. Um, if I had food content, I'd have another 30, which is just for food. And it's about like optimizing to like, so I get as much traffic as I can. But with now, the Instagram algorithm changes. They, if you put in 30, they would flag you as spam because you're just using the maximum. So then I think it's playing around. It's different for every single account. So then I feel like it's, uh, it's a balance of playing around with like different types of hashtag numbers um, to see what works best. And obviously, if you stick 30 every single time, it is a little try hard. And I get that. But then it's also with like the growing amount of people that use Instagram and stuff like that. You want to be, you want people to see the work you put in. So. It's striking a balance in the middle. Uh, who's the most, sorry, <laughs> who's the most uh, famous person you met at a party or, uh, or Instagram has got you? Drake. Drake. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, how much time does it take you to create content and schedule it and, you know, plan it out? Um, it depends. I, I, tr I try, well, it's hard once you have a lot of work, yeah. but um, I try to do once a day, at least. Um, but then it's more so of, I would try, if I, am I doing a, 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 f a clothing shot, I might bring two or three outfits out with me if I, I plan to do a shoot to th that day, and then I would, so I'd have enough days where I can space it out. And then with like, I just try to get as much content as I can, which is still, still um, like the quality that I like, that I'm happy with. Um, and so it's, it, it depends, but like it is like maybe like a couple hours a day if from like scheduling to editing to like thinking of like how to move things around like in total, like not so much as like just having a shoot every single day. Right. Yeah. Um, and how much do you at least also do engagement, intentional engagement on Instagram? What do you mean by intentional engagement? Do you engage with people, just do get pictures yeah. and yeah. stuff? Uh, I've actually met a lot of these uh, very big bloggers or uh, like even in like uh, the UK. So like I was able to like link up with um, like Casper Lee or like Joe Sugg and all, like all these people or even in like the States just from, just, you just gotta like reach out and like connect with them. It's like, just don't think like it's like, oh, just because they're big. Yes, the chance of like them replying is, is, is small, but if you, play your cards right, it's like a different game. Yeah. No worries. Anything else? Yeah. What's your long-term goal? Long-term goal? Yeah. Uh, it's more so of a money figure that I want to hit. Not so much as a, yes, like, I was like, dude, I want like a million followers. I want to get verified this year. Like, but it's like, I rather have a million dollars, like, <laughs> like get verified. Like, this is straight up, you know what I mean? Anything else? No? Thank you.